the world eaters are coming and with them we're getting a bunch of new law exciting law law that is making me scared to face the world eaters on the battlefield maybe i'll just have to join them and collect world eaters instead in today's video we're going to be going over that law this is just one part of that law there's going to be more sets of law coming out over the coming weeks so let's jump in and let's get talking a big shout out to shikaius for doing this right up without him this video would not be possible please go and check out his reddit over in the description of this video so one of the big talking points is actually the return of angron in the current setting and it's stating here that angron has actually returned because of war master abaddon so it says here at the behest of war master abaddon Angron has returned with the largest gathering of world eaters since the Horus Heresy. To me, that is absolutely huge because during the Horus Heresy, the world eaters were legion size. There was thousands, you know, tens of thousands of world eaters. And now this statement is saying it's bigger than that. You know, it's, 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 it's huge. So, you know, there's a lot of world eaters who are about to just roar into oblivion anything that they come across. Um, it goes on to say that Angron is being unleashed to assist in recovering an item of great importance for Abaddon. Now, for those of you who've been following the law, this looks like to be that type of key slash device uh, that is going to be linked with Vashtor, and it's going to give Abaddon that kind of tactical advantage, well, basically a new type of weapon for him to unleash upon the Imperium and the Galaxy as a whole. Now, something else about Angron, which is kind of scary, but also awesome in the same sentence, um, it states it here that there is a rumour among the Imperials that are allowed to know such things with the opening of the Great Rift, that Angron cannot be banished now. Now, before, Angron could be banished. We had it. Angron was banished during the first uh, War of Armageddon by the Grey Knights. Um, Hyperion, if I'm not mistaken, was the Grey Knight who banished him. But apparently now, that is not an option. When his physical form is destroyed, he returns far quicker than should be possible. So there's something more now happening with Angron where if you manage to destroy his form on the battlefield, he will still return to that battlefield. So yeah, that is very, very scary, but it's also awesome for Angron. I'm thinking now maybe the only way for Angron to be actually stopped is with Gilliman's sword. For those of you who don't know, Gilliman has the sword of the Emperor, and that sword will permakill any demon, any demon prince, any demon primarch. So if he dies by that sword, then there's definitely not going to be any more Angron. Khan gets a little bit of love in this kind of lore update. It states that even after 10k years of slaughter, Khan retains all his tactical senses, while the other World Eater leaders are as blood maddened as their troops. Khan is not. Khan is capable of great skill and is seen as a figure for the World Eaters only second to Angron, though Khan really has no interest in commanding any World Eaters or commanding the World Eaters at all. Now, going forward, we have Lord dedicated to some of the new units now, to the World Eaters as a whole. For example, um, it states here that some World Eater warbands are so lost in their violent impulses that they forgo recruitment, dooming themselves to extinction. So they're basically so lost in their bloodlust is that they don't actually stop to like, get new recruits for their friends who have died. They just keep going on and bringing blood for the Blood God. The World Eater warband is still capable of recruiting, rely on Berserk, surgeons and the accelerated recruitment methods of the great crusade and the horus heresy also they might forge demon packs to ensure enough marines are created or they may recruit members from other corny war bands that are eager to be implemented with the butcher's nails so they might be closer to their raging god now this is where it starts to get really gruesome and really awesome because it states one of the most deprived creations of the berserk surgeons is the eight cage a world eater that has nails tinkered with before being chained and strapped within the eight cage within the coffin like structure the world eater is driven to the madness of cornite demons um, which basically invade this being the world eater undergoes a spiritual battle against the demons over control 
of his body. It's said that the experience is unique for each wildeer. Some fight for their lives in the vast arena and others endure the torture of the demons regardless of what form or ordeal takes them. The wild eaters are tested to their limit. If a wild eater survives but fails the test, they might be turned into a warp spawn or be taken away by the demons to some other hideous fate. Now, those wild eaters that emerge victorious from the eight cage are called the eight bound. Of course, the eight bound is that new unit in the wild eaters. They have dominated the demons within their bodies and are now immense unnatural warriors empowered by the power of chaos. If an eight bound survives long enough, the demons and the host merge together to form a new being, an exalted eight bound. And right at the bottom here, it states, the world eaters rode at the forefront of Abaddon's 13th Black Crusade. With each success, the world eater recruits aspirants from worlds that they've butchered. The countless bloodthirsty mortals follow in their wake. So basically, the world eaters are kind of like the vanguard that are being sent to these worlds to just utterly destroy them and the followers that they're getting are just countless now they're just getting countless and countless followers in the name of the blood god of course some of them are probably going to be becoming um new world eaters that's why we're seeing the evidence now or should we say we're seeing in the text that the world eaters um are gathering since you know the largest group since the horus heresy which is absolutely frightening scary and of course you've got angron at the front of that blood tide and it's all about to come crashing down i am absolutely excited ecstatic um over this i cannot wait to see what stories come from this i want to see angron taking on some big big characters now from the law do you think that angron is going to be taking on people like gilliman um the lion for example if the lion comes back imagine the lion and angron i don't think we ever got that right during the great crusade slash horus heresy in terms of like honor jewels or like a proper jewel during the heresy so maybe if we could get something like that in 40k that is something that we can all just read about and love and stuff like that um i'm gonna put my money on lionel johnson because of course i am a deep down loyalist at heart Anyway, Chaparudios, I'm going to leave the video there. This is just, again, part one of all the new lore. I'm going to be getting the new Arcs of Oban book very, very soon. I'm going to be doing videos completely dedicated to that with all the little hints, you know, characters returning, all the big lore changes, everything that's been happening, really. It's all going to be absolutely epic. I would love to get your thoughts on today's video um, with Angron returning with all these world eaters. Angron returning and then not being able to be banished like he was before. That is very, very scary, right? Um, anyway, so... See ya, have a great day, post down below and we can talk there. Now you swan, bye and good luck, bye.